from the capital of the Finger Lakes, Geneva, New York. It's the Geneva Believer Show. Unfiltered, unflinching, independent news, interviews, investigative reporting and analysis that you won't hear anywhere else. And now, here's your host of the Geneva Believer Show, Jim Meany. Hello, Believers. The Geneva Believer Show is back. And on this episode, I'll be answering questions from readers, talking about the mayor and the First Amendment, and a lot more. So check it out. Hey, it's been a while, but I'm back. Hey, everybody, thanks for listening. It's uh, another episode of the Geneva Believers Show. After approximately two-year break, I'm feeling like I need to do another one of these. It's going to be an episode that's a little different from, than the ones that were done in the past, and, and in many ways different than anything I've ever written on the blog, because... A few days ago, I received a voicemail on the Geneva Believer Show hotline, and the caller asked a series of questions that I've been asked dozens, if not hundreds of times over the past three years. And I realized that I've I've sort of addressed the answers to the questions before in my articles or on the Facebook page, but I've never taken the opportunity to go in depth on on these questions and see if... uh, See if it helps people understand what I'm doing a little bit more. So, yeah, let's get right to it and let's go to the phones. Let's go to the phones. Time to check in with the Geneva Believer listener line. So this is a call that came into the Geneva Believer Show hotline at 10 p.m. on a Thursday night. It's a one minute and 49 second long voicemail. So I'm going to play it and then uh, pause and, and uh, make comments and, and answer some of the questions from this caller because it, this caller is very clearly very upset by something I posted. So uh, let's 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 take a listen. Hello, Geneva Believer. Uh, my name is. I actually saw. I'm not familiar with your Facebook page or anything like that. But okay, so we have to remember that this caller is. Not familiar with the blog, which I've been writing for three years, and just saw something that I posted and wants to tell me what they think. Okay. But um, I saw your post today, and it was extremely upsetting to me. Um, I also commented on um, some of the things that I felt, and you deleted my comments, which I was actually extremely upset that you would delete them. It just seems like that is not true journalism. So... Okay, so there's two uh, two things that the caller is concerned about. Number one, well, three things. Number one, the caller found my post upsetting. Number two, the caller commented on the Facebook post, and I deleted the caller's comments. And then third is that the caller thinks that if I delete comments on my Facebook page, that means I'm not a real journalist. So I'd like to first talk about ba- the, my policy on the Facebook page related to comments that are left on the page. I've explained this before, but, but here it is. One of the driving forces behind Geneva Believer and the idea of Geneva Believer is that city officials, government officials, large, wealthy, influential institutions are able to use the local existing mainstream media apparatus to send out press releases and to and to provide their narrative on whatever kind of uh, on whatever the issue is. So what Geneva Believer does is provides an alternative outlet, an alternative source for reporting on and reflections upon and conclusions drawn by by the actions or inactions of those same people who, of those organizations 
who are able to shape the narrative in the way that they want. So that's the mission. The mission and the idea is, hey, the city puts out press releases. The local media will report on those press releases. And there's very little room left for different perspectives in the public narrative. So how this translates to the Geneva Believer Facebook page is I want the articles to prompt discussion. I know that some people will not like them and negative comments are allowed on the site. A, 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 contrary to whatever's, whatever people feel, the way to get banned, the way to have your comments deleted and to get banned from the Geneva Believer Facebook page is to turn the conversation about whatever has been posted into a conversation about me, my motives, my journalistic skills, my journalistic credibility, and all kinds of other things about me personally. What that does to the conversation and to the discourse on my Facebook page, the Geneva Believer Facebook page, is it becomes a distraction and it kills discourse. So I personally, subjectively decide when to delete a comment and when to ban someone from posting on the page. Now, many times I've also deleted comments where people jump on and say vicious personal things about individual city officials or well-known people in the community or people in the community in general. And I, and I feel like it's over the line. So if you feel like you've been banned unfairly, get a hold of me. Contact me through the contact page at GenevaBeliever.com or email me, Jim at GenevaBeliever.com or reach out on Facebook. Um, but really, email is probably the best way. And, and uh, if you feel like you can participate in the uh, conversations that go on on the Facebook page without without smearing me, or smearing people who have an alternative viewpoint to it, or posting things that seem intimidating or threatening to me or anyone, and not calling people names, then I will unban you and you can come back on. And you can be part of the conversations. You can look at other people. You can look at the comments section on Geneva Believer. There's plenty of comments, people saying things that aren't nice, and where they disagree with what's being talked about, very passionately disagree, but they're not personally attacking other people who have different opinions. Okay, and the other concern expressed by this caller was that uh, I'm not much of a journalist. I must not be much of a journalist if I'm deleting people's comments on Facebook, and I'm not really sure how to respond to that because I don't think that anyone or I mean I don't I don't know if going by the definition of a journalist in the 21st century I don't know if deleting nasty vicious personal comments on your Facebook page towards you or other people means that you're not a journalist I don't get I, I'm, I don't get that kind of, I don't I don't get that one at all so I'm sorry I can't answer that part of it uh, or address it because it doesn't because I don't know how how to connect the two so all right so what what else what else the call I have to say I would hope um, that I, I have no idea what your agenda is I have no idea what your motive is okay well I'm glad you brought it up I can tell you what my agenda and my motive are number one my agenda is to provide news and alternative views that you won't find from the other local media sources. I believe that the role of journalists is to have an adversarial relationship with the powers that be in government. I believe that was the purpose of newspapers, and that is what is at the heart of what journalism should be. The traditional role of journalism is to hold government accountable. Now, at the same time, journalists have traditionally held government accountable by, number one, reporting on facts. 
factual, uh, unbiased, so to speak, articles and stories about various issues. But also the news media provides news commentary and news view and political points of view and reflections on the actions of the government. Opinion columns, if you will, in the old newspapers. Now, Geneva Believer provides that as well. Geneva Believer provides the fact-based reporting by utilizing FOIL requests and multiple kinds of news sources, of publicly available sources of information. And third, traditional media has also played the role via political satire, political cartoons, of mocking the government, of taking the government down a few notches through sarcasm or snark or humor. That's nothing new. That's not the internet. That's not social media. And Geneva Believer, by being as irreverent as it is and utilizing memes, which I admit aren't really the best memes around, I don't think the Geneva Believer memeing game is any, there's nothing to brag about at all. But I'm doing okay for a guy in his 50s. So my agenda and my motive are to provide news. Hope that clears that up. Agenda and motive. Okay. Um, what's, what's the caller have to say now? Um, it's upsetting to see things with views with such hate, but that's just my own opinion. Okay, so this was a meme that made fun of police staffing levels. And the photo included nine police officers. It was a comment on police staffing levels. So I don't understand why anyone would say it was promoting hate. I understand that it can feel very personal for a lot of people in the Geneva community who know these police officers, who are related to Geneva police officers, who know their families for years, for generations. And some people will see that police department being goofed on as hate. And I acknowledge that, and I don't deny anyone that reaction. But characterizing criticism as hatred is inaccurate, and it's a smear against anyone who wants to criticize staffing levels in a city department. It's nothing personal. They're not personal attacks against anyone. It's a commentary on the way a city department is being staffed and managed. That's not hate. Okay, back to the call. Um, I would really love the opportunity for you to call me back. Uh, My phone number is area code. And I'd actually like to talk to you about everything that you, I mean, number one, that despicable post that you posted today. Okay, so I can tell this person's very upset because they talked for about a minute, then told me to call them, and now she's starting to explain again why she's mad at me, and she said 4-1, when actually the 4-1 was about a minute ago in this same voicemail. And she's upset about what she's calling my despicable post and wants me to call back which doesn't really seem like something I necessarily would want to do. And when someone calls and tells you how much they hate something that you did. And I decided I wouldn't call this caller back because it would give an opportunity to address these questions that the caller is asking that a lot of people have been asking me for a while. So let's listen a little more. Um, And just to see where you're coming from, because it's really not cool. But, um, again, my name is my phone number is area code um, I will not allow you to post my phone number on any social media or anything like that. But... Uh, I, I would never post someone's phone number on social media. That's weird that you even say that. I, I don't, I've never posted someone's phone number on fo- social media, except for the phone numbers of city officials and city departments. I wouldn't post someone's phone. If you, if someone calls the Geneva Believer Show phone number, I'm not going to post your phone number online. I might end up using your call. If you don't want me to use your voicemail, tell me in their voicemail. And please don't use this in a podcast, and I won't use it. Okay, what else we got here? Please give me a call back so we could talk through this because I'm having a very hard time. 
I know this person's upset, but the caller keeps referring to their own needs and how upset they are and how we need to talk this out. We don't need to talk this through. I don't, I don't really need to explain myself to anyone. I appreciate, I appreciate that you would like to talk, but this sounds like a phone call demanding that I call you back and explain myself. I don't need to explain myself to anyone. I'm doing this because I want to explain myself because I don't often explain myself, but you're not entitled to a phone call back from me so you can trash me on the phone. All right, what else? Understanding how you call yourself a journalist. How you I already explained that. You say that you are a representative of Geneva. I have never said that I'm a representative of Geneva. This is good. This is good that I have this opportunity to, to do some, to address some of these myths, to address some of these conclusions that people have drawn about me and about Geneva Believer and about the work that I've done. For the record, I have never declared myself a representative of Geneva. However, as a journalist, the role of a journalist is to represent the people whose voices aren't being heard, the working class and the poor. That's what I believe is the role of journalism. And that's who I'm working on behalf of. That doesn't mean every single person agrees with everything I write, but that's my motive and that's where I'm coming from. If I write an article and say that members of the community aren't being served by city government, that doesn't mean that I'm asserting some sort of representation over people. That's just how journalism works. Okay, what else we got here? Um, and how you say that you're representing the greater good. Um, I don't know if I've ever used the phrase, I am representing the greater good, but I'm not ashamed of the work I'm doing. I don't apologize for the work that I do. And I think that the work that I do makes Geneva a better place in the long run. Okay, we're almost done with the call here. A little more. Don't get it at all, but hey. And that was the end. I don't get it at all, but hey. Well, hopefully the caller is listening to this episode as well and hopefully getting a better understanding of why I do what I do. And, and I want to thank the caller for uh, giving me an opportunity to answer a lot of these questions for a lot more of my readers. This is the Geneva Believer Show. On page one of the Insights section in the Easter Sunday 2020 Finger Lakes Times, Mayor Steve Valentino made a guest appearance with a piece called Stop, Just Stop, a message from Mayor Valentino. Now that's quite a headline. Stop. Just stop. Seems like the mayor is publicly scolding someone. I wonder who he's scolding. Anyway, the mayor's piece, uh, which I'm not going to read all of. At one point in the piece, the mayor directly references Geneva Believer. Now, like other city councilors who also lack political courage, Mayor Valentino wants to criticize and smear Geneva Believer without actually sticking his neck out and saying that it's about Geneva Believer. Because maybe he and the other counselors who have done the same thing, including Counselor Camera, maybe he realizes that it's not a good look for a mayor or any elected official in a small city to attack a local independent news source, especially when that news source has written articles that criticize the performance of that mayor or that elected official. And again, I'm not going to read the whole piece. I'm just going to summarize. It's essentially a piece telling both sides, the left, the right, to be respectful of one another. But I'll provide a couple of highlights. The piece starts out with Mayor Valentino bragging about his campaign for mayor last year against his lifelong friend Mark Pitifer. Now, throughout the mayoral campaign, both Mark Pitifer and Steve Valentino emphasized that they were not going to engage in mudslinging, that they were simply going to focus on the issues and have a respectful and clean campaign. Now, that's an admirable goal and fundamentally not something anyone would really argue with. But in my estimation, what ended up happening is we had a campaign for mayor with two candidates who were extremely hesitant to draw attention to any political differences that they had. 
there were times, there were public events where they essentially told people, we're more or less the same guy, except one of us has experience and one of us doesn't. We agree on a lot of things. So for me, as an observer and a voter, it made it a little more difficult to decide who to vote for, because on the issues, they seem to have very little deviation from one another's positions. But in any case, Valentino's column begins by letting everyone know that he knows how to engage in the political system without being disrespectful of one another. Which, of course, follows Steve Valentino's pattern over the last several years being covered by Geneva Believer. Steve Valentino has a tendency to come off as condescending, holier than thou, and patronizing. And naturally, that's the kind of mayor he's going to be. He's going to scold people. He's going to he's going to write an opinion column in the Finger Lakes Times telling people, stop, just stop. So that's the kind of mayor Steve Valentino is going to be. So after talking about his campaign for mayor last year and how respectful and noble he and his opponent behaved, he says this, quote, I wish I had the switch that could have turned off one vicious social media site a long time ago, end quote. Now again, Steve and the other counselors like to smear and criticize Geneva Believer without saying the name Geneva Believer, which is cowardly. Now, my readers out there know that I'm currently involved in a legal situation, a complaint that was filed against me for libel and defamation by Massa Construction Company. I'm unable to talk about the case at all, but what I can say is that I do have representation and the case is moving forward. So right now, in addition to that, I have the mayor of the city characterizing my blog as a vicious social media site. You know, Steve Valentino can present himself as someone who doesn't want to engage in the kind of divisive back and forth that happens on a national level, yet he will use his position as mayor to write a piece in the local newspaper and essentially call a local independent news site fake news, but not even fake news, vicious, a vicious social media site. And again, by calling it a social media site, that demeans what it is. It's actually a blog. It's a news source. Over 160 articles, over nearly four years, more than 200,000 views and counting. My reporting has been uh, cited and reported on in the Finger Lakes Times, the Watertown Daily Times, the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle, FingerLakes1.com, and other mainstream media sites. And most importantly to remember, I do journalism that criticizes Steve Valentino and has criticized Steve Valentino on more than one occasion over the past several years. So for him to come out and use his platform as mayor to smear the work that I do, I feel is a violation of my civil rights. Without saying that he wants to silence me, he's saying that he wishes that he could silence me and smears me as a vicious social media site, as if what I'm doing is... It's like a, a, an anonymous Facebook page or something like that. Which brings up another issue. I want to make it very clear. Sometimes new readers happen upon the Facebook page and they leave comments accusing me of hiding behind a Facebook page to make anonymous claims. I've never hidden my identity. From day one, my website makes it clear who I am. I'm not hiding. I never have. I express my opinions, many of which upset a lot of people and cause me stress and grief. But that's part of the deal. I don't hide behind an anonymous Facebook page. I'm not hiding. But Steve Valentino doesn't have the courage to identify me directly. He wants to say, I wish I had the switch that could have turned off one vicious social media site a long time ago. He's going to say that. This is who Steve Valentino is. You know, last year, in 2019, in August, I was asked to appear on a podcast on FingerLakes1.com to discuss media mergers and the state of journalism locally and nationally. The show was hosted by Josh Durso and guests included myself and also Ted Baker, host of Finger Lakes Morning News on Finger Lakes News Radio, and Stephen Keeler, uh, who's the chair of the Cayuga Community College School of Media and the Arts. Now, during the podcast, Ted Baker made some very interesting and important comments about the state of journalism today, specifically the state of investigative journalism and why a lot of mainstream outlets and newspapers are no longer able to do the kind of investigative journalism that was done for years in the industry. 
with the exception of large media conglomerates who have the staffing and the time and the funding to do those kind of investigative pieces. Uh, first, Ted Baker talked about how local media outlets today don't have the staffing or the funding to do in-depth investigative pieces. Uh, he also made these comments. Um, very interesting. Check it out. Uh, it, to go back to what you were talking about before, what led to all this, uh, newspapers also were backing away from investigative journalism anyway because that's the problem with advertising-driven media. Do you go after the investigative story that may wind up involving the president of your biggest advertiser. Or in the case of a small town newspaper, how many times do you see the publisher of a small town newspaper and he's also the president of the Chamber of Commerce? You know, how how independent can you be? I mean, that's, you know, Jim's not beholden to anybody and so he can go full speed ahead and tell it like it is. You don't have to worry about who you're going to offend. Now, Ted makes some great points there about independent journalism and the kind of the freedom an independent journalist has. And I'll also take this opportunity to point out to uh, some of my readers, I've, I've heard from some readers who say, you're not independent. You're speaking out in favor of certain policies and you're speaking out against other policies. You're not independent. And my answer to that has always been, I'm independent of any kinds of influences like Ted Baker is talking about, personal, professional influences advertisers. I have no advertisers. And because I'm not a longtime Geneva resident, I don't have the same kind of personal relationships, professional relationships, and loyalties and biases when it comes to the actions of public officials that people who've lived here their whole lives may have. Not that I'm saying there's something wrong with having loyalties and personal relationships with people. It just helps illustrate the fact that I have more freedom to say what I feel needs to be said, and that's because I'm an independent journalist. And also, if Mayor Valentino or others are still confused or have questions about what a journalist is, I'll just play another little clip from that podcast from last August with Professor Stephen Keeler responding to a question from Josh Durso about my blog and the environmental blog run by Peter Mantius and how blogs fit into the definition of journalism today. And here's what Stephen Keeler had to say. Well, I mean, I mean, let's face it, you know, what, what Jim does, what Peter Manius does, I mean, they're journalists, um, and, you know, and they're legitimate journalists, and they're providing a very, very valuable service to the communities that they're in. Um, and we call, you know, the term for that now is the citizen journalist. Um, and that has a lot of value. Uh, to us as as citizens and as taxpayers uh, to have people like that, you know, keeping an eye on government, keeping an eye on how government spends our money and the decisions they make. And I would add to that, in addition to seeing myself as a citizen journalist, I also see myself as an advocacy journalist. As I've explained, I do the work I do to try to expose conflicts of interest or other underreported things that go on in Geneva government. And I do that because when I look around, I see two Genevas. I see one Geneva where there are people who have certain social and political advantages. That's one Geneva. And those people have those advantages because of their family name or their political or professional connections or the size of their bank accounts. And that's one Geneva. And then the other Geneva lives under a different set of rules and expectations. Now, the first Geneva that I mentioned, they have the influence and the power over the lives of the second Geneva that I mentioned. So as an advocacy journalist, I advocate for that second group of Genevans. Stephen Keeler also had this to say during the podcast. Um, you know, if you're lucky enough to have somebody like Jim, then you're in a community where you're informed. So getting back to the mayor's Easter Sunday scolding of the Geneva community, he goes on to tell everyone to just stop, just stop and take a look in the mirror. Realize that you can make a conscious decision every day to be a better person, to be a positive influence, to be a better father, mother, brother, sister, friend, neighbor, worker, business owner, community leader, or just you. And the you is all capitalized. Now, again, I'm not reading this whole letter, but there were other ways that the mayor scolded certain people in the community in the rest of the column. But then at the end, he's going to tell everyone to make a conscious decision to be a positive influence. After he just smeared a media source that he doesn't like because it writes unflattering things about him. 
And he wraps up his piece by, of course, taking the high road, telling everyone he's pretty easy. Just ask, give him a call. He's not afraid to communicate openly. He's available and approachable. But he says, and I quote, I choose not to enter into the toxic environments that have no true effect on creating change. End quote. You know, I'm proud of the work that I've done with Geneva Believer over the past three plus years. I've drawn attention to conflicts of interest, my reporting on the Geneva Foundry disaster, I believe, and I've been told by many people in the community, had a significant effect on how the city eventually responded to the crisis, which I think is a positive effect of creating change. I wrote about Jack Montesano long before Jack Montesano was arrested by the Geneva Police Department for choking a woman who was in custody, allegedly strangling a woman who was in custody at the police department with cameras on that Jack Montesano knew were on. Now, while my work didn't create or affect change specifically, I don't think my work had anything to do with Jack Montesano's choking a woman, allegedly, or his arrest, but I did warn people about Jack Montesano. I believe that my reporting had a positive effect on the city manager search. I think that I helped bring a lot of attention to issues around the downtown revitalization initiative. And I believe that my work helped improve the outcome of that effort, my reporting on the budget process and other things that I've reported on that have resulted in positive outcomes or have shown to be or stories that have proven to be more credible down the line after I've written about them. Mayor Valentino knows all of this. I expect to get smeared by people on Facebook or in online comments where people call me a bad person or evil or vicious. But when it comes from elected officials like the mayor or Councilor Camera, then that speaks to issues of the First Amendment and the fact that elected officials, even elected officials in small cities like Geneva, should not be making public declarations and smearing people who have opinions that they don't agree with. I believe that it's a violation of my First Amendment right, and I want the mayor to know that I'm not going to be intimidated by him. I'll continue to write, and I will continue to report in the way that I think best serves the Geneva community. Okay, now, and following the theme of this podcast, which has been addressing misconceptions and questions about the work that I do, I'm going to do a real short segment here called, Is It True? Is It True? What they say about you. Now, I've seen a significant number of people on Facebook who are making a claim about me, and I'm going to ask you, the listeners, what you think. Is it true or is it not true? The claim is that before moving to Geneva, I lived in Ithaca, and that for some reason I was run out of Ithaca and I ended up in Geneva. So what do you think, folks? Is it true? Well, I'm going to give you the answer right now. No, it is not true. For the record, I believe I have visited Ithaca in my lifetime no more than 10 times, maybe 12. I've visited, and that includes just driving through on my way to go somewhere else. So that's number one. I've never lived there. Number two, and this really isn't relevant because number one's not true, but actually I have a question about how exactly someone can get run out of town and forced to move to another town or city. I don't know exactly how that works or how to do that, but I'm curious and I'd like to, if anyone out there has any idea on how to run someone out of town, I'd like to know that information. So if you could send it to me via the contact page on the website, or you can call the Geneva Believer Show hotline, which is actually just the Geneva Believer hotline. Uh, Call the Geneva Believer hotline at 315-577-3770 and tell me if you know how to run someone out of town. Is it true what they say about you? Unfiltered, unflinching, independent news and views. This is the Geneva Believer Show. Well, I want to thank everyone for listening. I appreciate you, whether you're listening to this because you don't understand what my deal is, or you're listening to this because you do understand and you think I'm all right, or you're listening because you do not like me. I appreciate all of you, and I and I respect that all of you have different beliefs and different opinions of me and social issues and political issues and issues related to Geneva. One thing I'm not going to do is condescend to you or tell you how I think you should behave in order to be considered a positive influence 
or a value to the community. That doesn't mean I think that everyone should be disrespectful and unpleasant and vicious to one another. I'm not saying that I agree with anonymous trolls online saying whatever they want to say without any accountability, personal or otherwise, including saying things about private citizens. I'm not saying that's the kind of stuff I support. If the mayor of Geneva believes that people are posting things online that are not true, then he needs to address those issues specifically rather than writing an opinion piece on Easter Sunday making vague accusations against me and my reporting and demanding that everyone behave according to his definition of respect. So again, thanks for listening, everyone, and I hope you're all staying safe. I'm wishing everyone the best in this current time dealing with the pandemic. I want to encourage everyone to go to connectgeneva.com if you need help or if you want to help with uh, efforts to make sure that people have what they need in our community during this time. Thanks for listening. Believe. Thanks for listening to the Geneva Believer Show. Go to GenevaBeliever.com and enter your email address on the homepage to receive updates for new stories and podcasts. If you have comments or suggestions, use the comment page on the website or leave a message on the Geneva Believer hotline at 315-577-3770. If you'd like to support Geneva Believer, visit GenevaBeliever.com and click the support button. And as always, anything you can give to help the blog and the podcast is deeply appreciated. Until next time, believe. Stay a believer. I plan to stay a believer. I met a friend of mine the other day. He said he couldn't stay because the world was going to end at the end of May. We made and pass, and everybody's still sitting here on the ass. With some talk, they're now waiting for the judgment day.